Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. <laughs> okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for Dell EMC World 2017. This is theCUBE's eighth year of coverage of what was once EMC World, now it's Dell. EMC World 2017. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, and also my co-host from SiliconANGLE, Paul Gillen. Our next guest is Vikram Bambri, who's the Vice President of Product Manager at Dell EMC, uh, formerly with Microsoft Azure, knows cloud, knows Viper, knows the management, knows storage up and down, the Emerging Technologies Group, uh, formerly of EMC. Uh, good to see you on the Cube good, again. Good to see you guys again. Okay, so Elastic Compute, this is going to be the game changer. We're so excited about one of our favorite interviews with your colleague uh, we had on earlier. Unstructured data, object store, is becoming sure. super valuable. Absolutely. And it was once the throwaway, yeah, store the data lake. Now with apps and data-driven enterprises, having access to data is the value proposition that they're all driving towards. Absolutely. Where are you guys came with making that happen and bringing that data to life? So, I, I, when I think about object storage in general, right, people talk about like, you know, it's the S3 protocol or is the object protocol versus the file protocol. I think the conversation is not about that. The conversation is about the data of the uh, universe is increasing, right, and it's increasing tremendously. You're talking about 44 zettabytes of data by 2020. You need an easier way to consume, store the data in a meaningful way, and not only just that, but being able to derive meaningful insights out of that, either when the data is coming in or when the data is stored uh, on a periodic basis, being able to drive value. So having access to the data at any point of time, anywhere, is the most important aspect of it. And uh, uh, with ECS, we've been able to actually attack the market from both sides, right? Whether it's talking about moving data from higher uh, cost storage uh, arrays or higher performance tiers down to a more uh, like you know accessible, more cheap storage that is available uh, geographically, uh, that's one market. And then also, you have tons of data that's available on the tape drive, right? But that data is so difficult to access, so not available. And if you want to like you know go put that tape back on an actual active system, the turnaround time is so long. So being able to turn all of that storage into an active storage system that's accessible all the time is the real value proposition that we have to talk well, about. Well now help me understand this because we have all these different ways to make sense of unstructured data now. Right. We have NoSQL databases, we have JSON, we have HDFS, and we've got object storage. Where does it fit into the hierarchy of sort of making sense of unstructured data? The simplest way to think about it is we, we talk about a data ocean, right? Uh, with the amount of data that's growing, having the capability to store data that is in a global content repository. That is accessible. Meaning one massive repository. One massive repository. Yeah. And not necessarily in one data center, right? It's spread across multiple data center. It's accessible, mm -hmm. available with a single global namespace, regardless of whether you're trying to access data from a location A or location B. But having that data be available through a single global namespace is the key value proposition that mm -hmm. uh, object storage brings to, brings to the bear, right? The other part is the economics that we are able to provide consistently better than what the public clouds are able to offer, right? You're talking about anywhere between 30 to 48% 48, uh, 48 cheaper TCO than what public clouds are able to offer in your own data center with all the constraints that you want to like, you know, apply to it, whether it's regulatory environments, whether you're talking about uh, country specific clouds and such. So that, that's where it fits well together. But exposing that same data out, whether through HDFS or file, is where like, you know, ECS differentiated itself from other cloud platforms. Yes, there's like, you know, you can go to a Hadoop cluster and do a separate uh, data processing, but then you're creating more copies of the same data that you have in your primary storage, right? So things like that essentially help position object as like, you know, the global content repository where you can just dump and forget about uh, like you know about the storage needs. Vikram, I want to ask you about the Elastic Cloud Storage, <coughs> uh, as you mentioned, ECS. It's been around for a couple of years. Right. Um, you un just announced a um, ECS, Elastic Cloud Storage, dedicated cloud. Sure. Can you tell me what that is and more about that? Because some people think of Elastic, they think Amazon, I'll just throw it in an object store and just sure. the cloud. What are, what are you guys doing specifically? Because you've got this hybrid right. offering. Absolutely. What is this about? Can you explain that? Yeah. 
So if you look at, uh, like, you know, there are two extremes or two paradigms that people are sort of attracted by. On one side, you have public clouds, which give you the ease of use, right? You just swipe your credit card and you're in business. You don't have to worry about the infrastructure. You don't have to worry about, like, you know, where my data is going to be stored. It's just there. And then on the other side, you have regulatory environments, or you just have environments where you cannot move to public clouds. So customers end up uh, putting ECS, right? Or other object storage uh, for that matter, yeah. though e ECS is the best. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like, you Biased, know. Biased, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, now we're starting to see customers, they're saying, can I have the best of both worlds? Can I have a situation where I like the ease of use, of the public cloud, but I don't want to be in a shared bathtub environment, right? I don't want to be in a public cloud environment. I like the privacy that you're able to provide me with this uh, ECS in my own data center, but I don't want to take on the infrastructure management. So for those customers, we have launched ECS uh, dedicated cloud service, and this is specifically targeted for scenarios where customers has like you know maybe one data center, two data centers, but they want to use the full strength and the capabilities of ECS. So what we're telling them, we will actually put their bot ECS in our data centers. ECS team will operate and manage that environment for the customer, but they're the only dedicated customer on that cloud. So that means they have their own secure, environment. Completely secure for their data. Exactly. No multi-tenant issues at all. No, and you can have like you know either partial uh, like you know uh, capabilities in our data center or you can fully host in our data center so you can do various permutation and com uh, combinations thus giving customers a lot of flexibility of uh, like you know starting with one point and moving to the other let's they start with like you know private cloud they want to move to a hybrid version they can move that or if they start from the hybrid and they want to go back to their own data centers they can do that as well let's change gears and talk about yeah. um, IOT you guys sure. had launched project Nautilus we also heard that uh, from <coughs> from your boss and um, earlier yet uh, two days yep. ago what is that about explain specifically what is project Nautilus so as I was mentioning earlier right there's a whole universe of data that is now being generated by these IOT devices right? whether you're talking about connected cars, you're talking about wind sensors, you're talking about like, you know, anything that collects a piece of data that needs to be not only stored, but people want to do real-time analysis on that data set, right? And today, people end up using a combination of like, you know, 10 different things. They're using Kafka, Spark, HDFS, uh, Cassandra, uh, DAS storage, to sort of build together like you know a makeshift solution that sort of works but doesn't really right or uh, you end up like you know if you're in the public cloud you'll end up using some implementation of a lambda architecture but the challenge there is you're storing same amount of data in few different places and not only that uh, there is no consistent way of managing data uh, processing the data effectively so what project nautilus is our attempt to essentially streamline all of that allow stream of data that's coming from these IoT devices to be processed real time or for batch in the same solution. And then once you've done that processing, you essentially push that data down to a tier, whether it's Isilon or ECS, depending on the use case that you're trying to do. So it simplifies the whole story on real time analytics and we don't want to do it in a closed source way. What we've done is we've created this new paradigm or new primitive called streaming storage and we are open sourcing it via Project Provega, which is in the Apache Foundation, right? We want the whole community, just like there's a common sense of like, you know, uh, awareness for object, file, we want to do that same thing for streaming storage. So you storage guys are active in open source. Explain quickly, a lot of you might not know mm -hmm. that. Talk about that. So yeah, uh, as I mentioned, right, Project Provega is something that we announced at Flink Forward Conference. Uh, it's uh, a streaming storage layer, uh, which is completely open source in the Apache Foundation, uh, and we just open sourced it today, uh, and giving customers the copy, uh, capability to contribute, code to it, take their version or like you know do whatever they want to do, like you know build additional innovation on top, and the goal is to make streaming storage just like a common paradigm, like everything else, right? And uh, in addition, we're partnering with another open source component. Uh, there's a company called Data Artisans based out of Berlin, Germany, and they have a project called Flink. And uh, we're working with them pretty closely 
to, to bring uh, Nautilus to fruition. The Cube was there, by the way. We covered Flink Forward, again, one True of the... True streaming engine. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. Very uh, good, very big open source project. Yeah, we were talking with Jeff Woodrow earlier about software-defined storage, self-driving storage, as he calls it. Sure. Where does where does ECS fit in the self-driving storage? Is this a this is an important part of, of what you're doing right now, or Absolutely. is it different? Uh, do you have a different use? Yeah, our vision right from the beginning itself was when we build this next generation of object storage system, it has to be software first. Not only software first, uh, where like you know, customer can choose their commodity hardware to bring to bear or we can supply the commodity hardware, but over time build intelligence in that layer of software so that like you know you can pull data off smartly to other uh, from uh, like you know SSDs to a more SATA based drives or you can bring in smart surround uh, uh, metadata search capabilities that we introduced recently because you have now billions of billions of records that are being stored on ECS. You want ease of search of what specifically you're looking for. Uh, so we introduced metadata research capability. So making the storage system and all of the data services that were usually outside of the platform, making them be part of the core platform itself. Are you working with Elasticsearch? Yes, uh, we are using Elasticsearch more to enable customers who want to get insights about ECS itself. And not less, Great. of course, is also going to like you know integrate with the uh, Elastic Search as well. Okay, Vikram, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on the queue. Bottom thank line, you. us. What's the bottom line message? Quickly, summarize the value proposition. Why customers should be using ECS? What's the big aha moment? What's the value proposition? I would say the value proposition is very simple. Sometimes it can be like you know people talk about lots of complex terms. It's very simple. Sustainably. Uh, low cost storage for their, con uh, like you know, for storing a wide variety of content in a global uh, content repository is the key value proposition. And used for application developers to tap Absolutely. into the whole DevOps, data as code, infrastructure as code yeah. movement. You start, what we have seen in majority of the use cases, customers start with one use case of archiving and then they very, qu very quickly realize that there's it's like a Swiss Army knife. You start yeah. with archiving, then you move on to like you know application development, more modern application, yeah. or cloud native yeah. applications development. And now with IoT and Nautilus being able to leverage push uh, data from these IoT devices onto ECS. As I said on, on two days ago, I think this is a huge important area for agile developers. Having access to data at less than 100 milliseconds from any place in the world is going to be table stakes. ECS has to be, or in general object storage has to be part of every important conversation that is happening about digital IT transformation. So it sounds like eventually most of the data is going to end up there. Absolutely. Okay, so I'll put you on the spot. When are we going to be seeing data in less than 100 milliseconds from any database anywhere in the fabric of a, of a company for a developer to call a data ocean and give me data back from any database, from any transaction, less than 100 milliseconds? Can we do that today? We can do that today. It's available today. The, the challenge is like, you know, how quickly <laughs> Enterprises are uh, like you know adopting the technology. So they got to architect it. Yeah, they have to architect it. Yeah. If, it's, if it's all on Isilon. <laughs> well, they can pull it. Uh, they can cloud pool it down from Isilon to ECS. True. Yeah. Speed, low latency is the key to success. Congratulations. Thank you and so much. And I love this new object store. Love this tier two value proposition. It's so much more compelling for developers, certainly in cloud native. Absolutely. Vikram, here on theCUBE, bringing you more action from Las Vegas. We'll be right back as day three coverage continues here at Dell EMC World 2017. I'm John Furrier with Paul Gillen. We'll be right back. Ah.